Hi everyone, my name is Steve Lilliston and you're listening and viewing hopefully our library which is a 30 minute program sponsored by the lovely folk at the Masters and Library to let you know about some of the many new books being introduced into the library this month. Our library is being broadcast to you today on Arrow 92.7 FM, your community access radio channel, and Wirapa TV on Freeview Channel 41. This program is broadcast live on the third Friday of each month at 3.30 and repeated on the fourth Friday again at 3.30. So let's get started. Um, I've gone through... Uh, I've gone to the library and spoken with the nice ladies there and gentlemen um, and looked at all the the books that have come into the library and there are boxes and boxes of them there are lots so um, I've chosen not to go through all um, nine boxes of books I've select made a selection um, from those and I want you to know right now that they're not um, necessarily books that I would have selected myself for, for myself for my own reading I like to think that the selection I've got is a for a cross section of all the people that will go into the library that's my plan anyway I hope it I succeed so first of all I'll go through some of the new fiction new fiction coming into the library this coming month the first one I've selected is called where she went which is by Kelly Simmons. So what happens when your worst fear comes true? Her only daughter has just gone away to college and Maggie O'Farrell knows she's turning into one of those helicopter parents she used to mock, worrying constantly, texting more than she should, even occasionally dropping by the campus just to say hi. But Maggie can't shake the feeling that something terrible is about to happen to Emma and then just as Maggie starts to relax, her daughter disappears. The clues are disturbing. An empty dorm room where Emma was supposedly living. A mysterious boy described as future husband in her phone. Dorm mates who seem more sinister than friendly. As Maggie combs over the campus looking for signs of her daughter, she learns more about Emma's life than she ever thought possible. Kelly Simmons delivers another gripping novel in Where She Went. An unforgettable story of letting go and the secrets that surface when the person keeping them is gone. So that sounds like a... might be fun to, to have a read of that. So that's the first one. The second one I've, I've looked at is called Welcome to the Pineaway Motel and Cabins. And that's by Katerina Bivald if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and my apologies if I'm not. So, welcome to the Pineaway Motel and Cabins. The Pine Creek Motel has seen better days. Henny would call it charming, but she's always seen the best in things. Like now, when she's just met an untimely end crossing the road. She's not going to let a tiny thing like death stop her from living fully, not when her friends and family need her the most. After the funeral is over, her body is buried, and the last casserole dish is empty. Henny is still around. She's not sure why, but she realises she has one last opportunity to help her friends discover the happiness they once knew before they, lost, before they lose the motel and cabins they've cherished for years. So this is from the New York Times best-selling author, Katerina Bivald. It's a charming tale of a ramshackled roadside motel the heartwarming story of love friendship community and the art of living even when it's already too late so that sounds really interesting could be a lot of fun so that was welcome to the pineaway motel and cabins by katarina bivald another one i've looked at is called not her daughter and this is by ria frey so there's, there's a couple of reviews about the book. Uh, Not Her Daughter is a cleverly constructed novel that will have you questioning everything you believe about right or wrong. Frey skillfully tangles you up in these two women's lives, the mother and the daughter, 
and never lets up on the tension all the way until the dramatic conclusion, a remarkable portrayal of motherhood in all its beautiful glory and heart-wrenching despair. And that's by the New York Times best-selling author, Chevy Stevens. In Not Her Daughter, Frey pulls off a difficult task, balancing a nail-biting plot with a thought-provoking question. Is a crime committed with the best intentions still a crime? A chilling, powerful tale of love and sacrifice, of truth and perception. Not Her Daughter will make you miss your bedtime, guaranteed a stunning debut. That's from Kimberly Bell, internationally best-selling author of The Marriage Life. The Marriage Lie, I beg your pardon. So there's a lot of good reviews from a lot of um, very famous authors. So that is Not Her Daughter, and that's by Rhea Frey. Um... The next one I found really interesting, a, a nice um, twist on Little Women by Louisa M. Alcott, a um, very famous, very old book. This one's called Meg and Joe, and it's by Virginia Cantra. The March sisters, Meg and Joe March. Reliable Meg, independent Joe, stylish Amy, and shy Beth have grown up to pursue their separate dreams. When Jo followed her ambitions to New York City, she never thought her career in journalism would come crashing down, leaving her struggling to stay afloat in a gig economy as a prep cook and secret food blogger. So you see, they've updated it. It's basically um, the March girls, updated for modern times, and I guess a bit older, doing the things that they said they were going to do if you can remember those things. Meg appears to have the life she always planned. The handsome husband, the adorable toddlers, the house in a charming subdivision. But sometimes getting everything you've ever wanted isn't all it's cracked up to be. When their mother's illness forces the sisters home to North Carolina for the holidays, they'll rediscover what really matters. One thing's for sure, they'll need the strength of family and the power of sisterhood to remake their lives and reimagine their dreams. So if you've, um, if you've ever read Little Women, that will um, certainly ring a bell for you. The way the sisters work together, the, the love of the sisters helping each other. That, sound, that sounds like a real interesting twist. And that is Megan Joe by Virginia Cantra. The next one is a, a complete switcheroony. This is called A Witch in Time. It's by Constance Sayers. Some love affairs last lifetimes. From Belle Epoque, France, to modern day Washington, D.C., from worlds pastoral, decadent, flashy, to commercial, Sayers weaves a spell of love, lust, and magic to create a page turner like no other. And that's from Steph Post, author of Miraculum. A narrative rich in historical detail, brightened by flashes of humour and filled with colourful characters and fascinating settings, a most rewarding read. That's by Louisa Morgan, author of A Secret History of Witches. So you can, I think you can probably work out the trend here. Um, yes, so it's a, um, a witch in time. It's obviously about witches and... If that's your thing, um, it's a new book, Come Into the Library, by Constance Sayers. And everybody seems to think it's a really good book. So, um, so that might be something you'd be interested in. The next one, the last one in the fiction series of books that I, that I looked at, um, that I picked on, was uh, The Antipodeans, by Greg McGee the well-known New Zealand author, playwright, poet, probably actor and everything else. So The Antipodeans is a novel of epic proportions in which families from opposite ends of the earth discover an intergenerational legacy of love, blood and betrayal. An ailing New Zealander returns to Venice, determined to confront his past. He's accompanied by his daughter, who is escaping hers. 
The Antipodeans spans three generations of New Zealand and Italian families, from Venice to the South Island of New Zealand, from the assassination of a Gestapo commander in the last days of Italian resistance during World War II, to contemporary real estate shenanigans in Auckland, from political assassination in the darkest days of the Red Brigade, to the vaulting cosmology of particle physics. So there's a lot of praise for this, um, for this novel, and it sounds like a really good novel. Greg McGee is um, very famous. He's, he's done a number of uh, plays and books, and he's very prolific and um, very expert in his craft. So that sounds like a, a good book to read, at least for me anyway. So there we are. That's um, a, a selection. It's a very small selection of the many, many books that are in the Wellington Library coming in this, this uh, next month. Um, new fiction, new non-fiction, I beg your pardon, non-fiction. And again, I've made a, a selection. There are hundreds of books. It seems to me there are hundreds of books coming in, so I just picked some at random and um, some that I thought might, uh, might, uh, might tickle your fancy. This one is called Dreams by Rosie March Smith. Find out how to decode and interpret your dreams to reveal how the images, stories and emotions you experience in sleep are deeply connected to your waking life. Learn how you can train your mind to access your unconscious and open the gateway to self-discovery. Explore hundreds of dream meanings and shine a light on the unique associations you bring to your dream world. So that sounds like an interesting, interesting book anyway. So all about your dreams and what they mean and, and how to interpret them and, and how to learn from them. Access your unconscious. All good stuff. That was Dreams by Rosie March Smith. This one I thought was... Again, quite interesting, very different. How to Have Impossible Conversations. This is by Peter Bogossian, if I've pronounced that correctly, and James Lindsay. And I beg your pardon, I've jumped one. So let me just go. I will continue that now. I've got that one. So this is How to Have Impossible Conversations. It's a self-help book, basically, on how to argue effectively, conciliate and gently persuade. The authors submit to getting it wrong in their own past conversations. One by one, I recognise the same mistakes in me. The world would be a better place if everyone read this book. As by Richard Dawkins, very famous author and um, denouncer of all things religious, author of, the, of Science in the Soul and the Outgrowing God. Uh, very interesting in our political climate. It seems impossible to have a reasonable conversation with anyone who has a different opinion. And I think we've all been there. Whether you're online, in a classroom, an office, a town hall, or just hoping to get through a family dinner with a stubborn relative. And um, so this will enlighten you how to have impossible conversations. Conversations you don't want to have, but are sort of forced into having. Um, so that is How to Have Impossible Conversations. Peter Bogossian. And James Lindsay. Lindsay. Um, Stronghold by Tucker Malarkey. This is a, um, sounds like a fascinating book. It was the salmon that had brought Guido to the fight. He had chased them for most of his life and seemed to take instruction from their wildness, their resilience and their unwavering purpose. Perhaps the salmon, with their epic migrations and unflagging determination to live, inspired him to choose a course that even those closest to him could sometimes not believe. So I think this is a mixture of um, outdoors pursuits, uh, coupled with um, um, how to... Um, he's learned from the sort of fights he's had with Salmon and, and how that's changed his life. And it's a, it's a real um, non-fiction book, Stronghold, by Tucker Malarkey if that's your thing. If not, give it a go anyway. Um, this is Beyond the Equator by Nicholas Hasluck. And this is a story about, well, it's not a story, it's a true story, 
Uh, like many young Australians in the 1960s, Nick Hasluck set sail for London in his case for a postgraduate law degree, but looking also for new horizons and ways to be a writer. From a seedy room at the International Language Club, he explored the Kangaroo Valley party scene around Earl's Court. And for those of you who are not from the UK, um, Earl's Court is full of Australians and New Zealanders. Uh, until he met a girl from the Cotswolds who was to change his life, a romance leading to misadventures in Europe and eventually to a job in Fleet Street. So that's a um, real-life story of a, a young Australian back in the 60s in England. That would be great, or London. Black Like Me. This is a, an older book. It's published in 2010. And Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. In the autumn of 1959, a white Texan journalist named John Howard Griffin travelled across the deep south of, of the United States disguised as a working-class black man. Black Like Me is Griffin's own account of his journey. Published in book form two years later, it sold over five million copies. Oh, two years later, it says 1961. It's a lot um, older than I thought. Um... Over five million copies revealed to a white audience the daily experience of racism and became one of the best known accounts of racial injustice in Jim Crow era America. Embraced by some and fiercely criticized by others, its legacy, 60 years on, remains problematic. But Black Like Me, nevertheless, stands as a fascinating document of its times. There is a saying amongst Negroes. <laughs> Nobody says Negroes anymore. There is a saying amongst Negroes that no white man, no matter how hard he tries, can really understand what it's like to be black in America. John Howard Griffin has come closer to this understanding than any white man that I know. And that was from Lewis Lomax from the Saturday Review. That just sounds like a fabulous book. Sort of a must-read, I would think. Anyway, so that's Black Like Me, John Howard Griffin all about racial inequality in America, but of course that stands for the rest of the world as well. And for a bit of light relief, uh, Wayward Pets by Annie England Noblin. She's cheerful, she's charming, and she's sitting on Maeve's front porch. No, not a long-lost friend, but an American bulldog named Happy, and she belongs to Maeve Stevens now, whether Maeve wants her or not. Maeve's been laid off, cheated on, mugged. So when she learns that her birth mother has left her a house, a vintage V-dub beetle and a marauding cat, she packs up and moves, hoping to start fresh in the small town of Timber Creek, Washington. Her new life includes a reclusive but tempting author living next door and a set of ready-made friends at the St. Francis Society for Wayward Pets, where women knit colourful sweaters for the dogs and cats in their care. A lot of fun. That just sounds like a lot of fun. That's Wayward Pets by Annie England Noblin. There's a cross-section of the books going into the library. And, of course, the Marston Library is a lot more than just books, uh, just in resources alone, materials. There are books, there are CDs, there are um, movies, DVDs, magazines. I subscribe to three magazines and I've got standing orders for three magazines and as soon as they come in I, I get them. They notify me and, and I get them. I do all that online, make all those requests online. So the, the Marston Library is, is a fabulous resource. If you've just tuned in and wondering what I'm talking about, you're listening to Our Library, which is a 30-minute program broadcast to you today on Arrow 92.7 FM your community access radio channel and wire for tv on freeview channel 41 sponsored by the masters and library to let you know about the new books being introduced into the library this coming month earlier in the program i went through some of the new fiction and non-fiction books being put into your library next month and now i'd like to have a quick chat to you about the programs on at the library so Tiffany, who runs the programs uh, at the Marston Library, showed me the um, the um, paper that she puts out 
which is a um, fascinating read. It's a great read about all the programs that they run at the library. And for our viewers, um, this is the Beast, and she updates it every month. I had no idea there were so many programs at the library. It's more than just books. It's programs for the young and old, children, teen programs. There are preschool programs. They're just It just blew me away to know that there are these sort of things available for free. <laughs> How good is that? The uh, Story Go Round program, preschool. Explore the world of books and enjoy the magic of stories and activities in our preschool story time. That's on um, the 4th of March, 11th of March. Well, I won't go through all the times. It's got all the times in this um, brochure. Uh, of all the different classes, but there, are, say, there's a, a book, book bugs book club that's from ages ten to thirteen. Stop motion puzzle project from ages nine plus. All sorts of things. One which got my attention though, which again blew me away, is called Spark Jump. Uh, Spark Jump is now called Skinny Jump. Spark Jump or Skinny Jump, is a low-cost prepaid internet for your home. The library offers courses to receive a free modem and low-cost data. The next two courses are Tuesday 7th of April at 10 and Tuesday 28th of April at 10. Of course, with the virus, I don't know whether, with, with the um, coronavirus, I don't know whether that's still on, because uh, we're trying to avoid congregations of large groups. But check out your library. Um, they're being very careful at the library when you go in um, so um, you can you can have a look at the programs there you can probably well you can have a look at the programs online as well going to um, Marston Library the but this program is a low-cost internet access program you get a modem you get the training and everything else but it's for families with children in low socio-economic communities people living in rural communities, people with disabilities, migrants and refugees with English as a second language, Maori and Pacifica youth, offenders and ex-offenders, and seniors. So that's why I was interested, not being terribly young these days. But it's for seniors as well. And I'm told it's, some, it's uh, $5 a month for 30 gig gigabytes which I think is incredible. Um, and the bandwidth, I questioned the bandwidth, the speed of that internet connection. And I'm told it's something like 20 megabits up and 50 megabits down. So if you know anything about bandwidth, that's good enough for smart TVs, uh, Netflix, all those good things. So check that out at your library. I think that's a marvellous, a marvellous facility. It's, and it's through Spark. The Skinny Jump program. Lots of things at the library. Just get in there and see what there's available. Look online, Marston Library. I don't have the log on in front of me, but it's you can Google it. It's the Marston Library. Fabulous programs they have on on in there for everybody in the community. Um, I've got a couple of other things I'd like to talk about. The, uh, but of course, it's all. <laughs> I put all these things together about a week ago, and then find with the coronavirus taking off as it has, it may not be quite as relevant. Uh, such as the new book club that I've just joined, which is a U3A book club, University for the Third Age, for older people, and that's held at Reap House on Queen Street on the second Monday of each month at 1:30. At least it was. I think it still is. But watch this space. I went to the last meeting, the first meeting I went to, and we went through a number of books. Everybody goes round and talks about the books that they're reading. And it was it was really, really interesting. The Shelley Bay Ladies Swimming Circle by Sophie Green, set in Australia in the 1980s. Four women meet to swim in ocean each, me each morning, become friends, and we follow the ups and downs of their lives. Bark Skins by Annie Prue set in Canada. She's the lady that wrote um, <laughs> Shipping News, amongst other things. 
Um, lovely, lovely writer, Canadian writer, beautiful writer. Barkskins is all about uh, families over 300 years in travels and rivalry, Second Canada. A number of books, I won't go through them, but just so you know, there are these, um, especially for seniors, the uh, book club, and it's a U3A book club. Keep your eye on that, held at Reap House. Again, with the coronavirus, who knows what's going to happen in the next five minutes, but that is uh, available. And I thought I'd also spend a couple of minutes just sharing with you what I've been reading. Um, I've had some bad luck this month with my book choices. It's either me or just bad books, but I suspect it's me. I've tried to read without success. This is Happiness by Niall Williams. Now, Niall Williams is one of my favourite Irish writers. Lovely writer. I love his writing. Um, but I just couldn't get into it. Awful. I felt terrible for him. Um, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Now, she won the Booker Prize jointly with Margaret Atwood. So it's uh, a very um, prestigious book. And I'm sorry, I just, I just couldn't get into it. I think it may... No, I don't, I don't want to um, prejudge it. But I really couldn't get past about 25 pages. So, uh, again, it's a very prestigious book and it, everybody raves about it except me. And Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. I think I managed about five pages of that one. But then I read Into the Fire, which is the fifth book in the Orphan X series by Greg Herberts. And that was an absolute page turner. I love Greg Herberts. I've read all the Orphan X books, and this is the latest one. It's fabulous. White Highlands by John McGee. I'm reading it right now. It's set in Kenya in 1952 with all the Mau Mau troubles that happened at that time. And that's a great read. And John McGee is a journalist. And his knowledge of Kenya and the Mau Mau and all that, all that time, um, it's um, second to none. And it's a fabulous, fabulous book. White Highlands by John McGee. So there we are. Um, I, I can't... I can't um, sing Masters and Libraries praises enough. I think they're a fabulous resource, a community resource. Pop in there, the ladies and gentlemen. I think there's one gentleman there. Very, very helpful. The, li the library has incredible resources. They're connected to 23 libraries across the Wellington region, Wellington area. So if they haven't got it there, it will be at another library somewhere. Um, if they have to source it from Porarua or the hut or wherever, it comes over in a day or two. Um, you can request, of course you can make reservations, but you can request if there's a book that you're interested in that they don't have, you can request that they purchase it for you. And depending on the, the type of book and so on, I'm sure the criteria, they review it and they will, if possible, they will buy it for you. And then you're first in line if they buy it for you etc there's so much to talk about but i won't i won't go on now because i'm running out of time so i'll just sign on now sign off now thank you for tuning in so you've been listening to our library a 30 minute program broadcast to you today on arrow 92.7 fm your community access radio channel and wire tv on freeview channel 41 sponsored by the Marston library to let you know all about the new books and programs being introduced into the library this coming month. I'll have a new program for you on Friday the 17th of April at 3.30. Until then, thank you very much and goodbye.